She's from the barrio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the barrio. She's from the barrio. She's from the barrio. She's from Riverside. And make sure you guys are tuning in to a Toast to Life podcast. You know, the most authentic, most organic. Taking a shot, Dylan, and behind the camera, my <laughs> guy. Taking a shot. Virtual. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's oh, good la- <laughs> Not you, him. Oh, okay. I'm like, yo, ¿qué hice? Sorry, continue. I'm going to drink this upside now. Cheers. Cheers. Like we have a whole production up in here. <laughs> we had to. I know. I'm you, a little numb getting nervous. You thought this was a game? <laughs> we're good, right? I thought it was just you and me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. we're good? We're on? Oh, okay. We're chilling. You ready? You good? I mean, I have to be ready. You want me to restart it? No, nah, you're good. My lipstick is you're all over that beer. <laughs> it's not beer. a beer. It's a seltzer. That's seltzer. Daddy beer. <laughs> that's <laughs> Sorry, that's daddy seltzer. There you go. Happy dad. You already know, bro. Wait, gold daddy's not the sponge that you wash. Anyways, continue. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, watch- if you're watching this, Atos to Life podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast, we are here one more time giving you guys the content, the conversation that you didn't know you needed to hear until you hear it. So we are here with someone that just – is all over TV, is <laughs> doing it in the social media game. Ms. Geraldine Moreno in the house. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She's been giving us free game already for the last, like, hour. You know, thank you so much. You're welcome. How are you doing? How you, let's start off there. How are you doing? I'm How doing you feeling? amazing right now. These, ha- these happy dads. Uh, happy daddies. <laughs> You're doing justice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing great. Well, yeah. So for the people that don't really know, you are an actress, all right? Quote unquote social media influencer. You came out. You're born in Riverside. <laughs> shout out to Riverside. Shout out to shout out to Riverside. Um let's get right into it. What when you grew up in Riverside, how was that upbringing now that you're from Riverside now to LA? So Taking it back just a little bit about Geraldine. So growing up in Riverside is it was good. Kind of you're giving me shit about it earlier. <laughs> Not me. Don't come after me. I didn't no, say nothing. Come after him. He's like, oh, you're from Riverside. You're one of those. No, you know, shout out ah. Jenny sixty nine. You know, we're gonna get you on the podcast sometime. But <laughs> no, I love Riverside. Um, growing up was really hard because my parents obviously came to the United States with no papers. They've been married for 32 years, and they're like old school, from Guadalajara, Michoacan, you name it, parents, hardworking parents. Yeah. And I'm the oldest of my sisters, so my dad was like really tough on me till this day. Um, my parents work at a car dealership, so I had to wash cars after school. I would cry. Like, I remember elementary school during the weekends. Yeah. He'll be knocking on my door. He's like, Yeralin. Yeah, Cinco minutos para que te arregle. So I'm like, Dad, I'm a woman. He's like, I said five minutes. So I was like a sergeant. <laughs> but that was like elementary school, middle school, high school, college. I helped my dad out through the whole thing. Uh, selling cars, picking up cars at the car auction, washing the cars. Oh, snap. Yeah. T- yeah. All that. So I'm probably a little bit more masculine than feminine. <laughs> but is that a good thing or bad thing? Um, it's a good thing when it comes to career. It's an amazing thing mm-hmm. because, you know, you're you look at somebody in their eye like, you know, face to face, you're looking at their eyes, you're reading people, you know how to talk to people, you know how to approach people. Excellent. But when it comes to relationships, it's the hard part. Because, you know, you have that like demeanor of like aggressiveness and a lot of men don't like that. <laughs> they don't. They don't. She don't need no man. <laughs> I want a man. There's a difference. But you don't need him. No. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I do. Maybe I do need a man. No, okay, so me. let for for the ones listening in, for the for again, if you haven't, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, go subscribe daily, TikTok, follow it because we're dropping videos daily. For everybody listening, you know you do have those parents, especially coming from Hispanic background, Mexican parents, that they don't care if you're a, 
a guy or a girl. No, they don't. You got to do chores. You better get up and yep. go do them. Yep. I know, especially for for when I was growing up. Hey, well, you want five dollars? Hey, go cut the grass. Yeah, I'll give you ten dollars to go waste it. Back then, ten dollars was like balling. Mm-hmm. And go two chicken sandwiches at McDonald's, <laughs> large fries <laughs> that would cross your eyes. That was a date with that barbecue sauce. Uh, no, buffalo sauce. Buffalo sauce. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like it's spicy. Oh yeah, okay. for sure, for sure. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, growing up, do for you growing up in Riverside. What was what do you think? What was the most like challenging things for you personally? Um, I would say my dad trying to understand my career and what I wanted to do because mm. he was not supportive at all. Ooh. And it's it was I understood him because obviously like I feel like oh, we all have some type of trauma, some type of issue. Okay, we're all going through that. Yeah. But obviously the first generation come to the United States, they want a better life for us. So I feel like all he wanted is like okay, go to college, get it like this professional job and then or work for me and then stay home until you get married but obviously you know that doesn't kind of like happen nowadays and me and my dad my dad would bump heads a lot because i'm like my dad i like to lead i like yeah. to make my own money i like people telling me what to do and i'm very creative and i didn't feel like i was me when i was at home i had to pretend to be something else mm. until i was i reached like i was like 22 23 i saved up some money and when i was going to college at that time I was ditching class to go to L.A. to do auditions for acting, for commercials, for movies. And then I would come home really late, and my dad would be like, wow, school was, you know, <laughs> long today. <laughs> Damn. And, I, and I was like, only if you knew that traffic, you know, <laughs> coming from L.A. to Riverside was not cute at all. Were, were you coming to college on this side either way? or? Well, I was going uh, to college in, like, an upland in Orange County was that traffic. Off. That traffic is bad. But huh? I would ditch class, like and yeah, yeah. Just but you to, were doing it to like work on something you really wanted to. Yeah, yeah. You were then, you were trying to set those those aligned, and yes. I mean, what a lot of people don't know, and for everybody trying to figure this out is, you know, one of the recommendations that I've heard, and I tell other people is like, yo, don't leave your day job. Whatever you're trying to do yet, still, like if you want to follow your dream, don't leave your day job until your dream pays. Exactly. Your lifestyle, but there's preparations, right? You don't know if it's gonna pay off in a in a year, in a month, two months. You just two don't years. know. You just have to believe and have faith. So, the biggest thing for you is doing that, doing that drive daily, doing the auditions. For the people that don't know, when was that like? Hey, you know what? I'm not going to school. Um, this is what I really want to do. Like, when did you drop that? Like, when did it hit me? When did it hit you? When did you? And when did you drop that bomb on your parents? Well, one thing about me is I'm not no quitter. So if I went to college, I was going to finish college no matter what. Ooh. So once I finished college, I got my bachelor's degree. I got my associates in criminal justice, and I got my bachelor's in business management. Just okay, <laughs> okay, studious so ass. Fool. I was like, Ugh, this is what it feels like to be smart. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I did that. I honestly, I did it for my parents. I because yeah. I remember my dad walking into like right when I graduated high school. By the way. <laughs> I went to like 10 different high schools. My what? my high school was, it, it, it was really bad because I couldn't fit in. I always felt like I couldn't fit in. I was always different. I was dressing different. My mindset was different. All I thought about was I want to go to LA and pursue acting. I want to pursue commercials. I want to be in the entertainment. I want to make people laugh. I love making people laugh. It's like one of like my things. Yeah. And I want to eventually blow up to the point where I'm making so much money that I want to help everybody else. But you, you just mentioned right now you you were different. You in went high to school. all these. So like, but what? So who were you then in high school? Yes, I was lost. I was oh. so lost. What I mean by that is like my grades. <laughs> I'm throwing myself under the bus right now. My no, my grades were like, believe it or not, all F's, point eighteen GPA. Yeah, all I was good at was <laughs> <laughs> high five over there. I see you. No, he doesn't have a diploma. Oh, it's okay. That's why. <laughs> you guys are sucked up. <laughs> Episode 10 of Dylan not, still not having his diploma. To be continued. <laughs> um, no, my, my grades were horrible. The only good grades that I had was in theater and PE. <laughs> Those were the only ones I had. And then I went to like 10 different high schools because I just, I couldn't focus. I was like always in my head and then I was constantly fighting with my parents and I couldn't like, I just felt so lost and understood. Like, nobody understood me. Were you, so you were, what do you think you were just misunderstood? Misunderstood and 
I didn't even know who I was. Like, everybody in school was like, I want to go to college to be a doctor. I want to be a, I want to be this, like, law person, this and that. I want to be a cop. And I'm like, bro, I just want to go to LA and people laugh. Like, is that weird? <laughs> it's like, is that even a career? Like, yeah. how did you even know that was a career? That, that I didn't weird. know I wanted to be an actor until I was, like, 16 or 17 years old. What was that? What was that term, turning moment? Like, when because, did you know? What did you see? Okay, so when I would watch TVs and novelas and all that, it was, like, all imagination. What's like, your favorite novela? <laughs> Gaviota. <laughs> I think, <laughs> did you remember that? No, did you? <laughs> or La Madrastra. I okay. mean, bro, I, woo, I could go in and out, yeah. But, um, no, I would watch, like, novelas, and I'm like, ooh, I could do that. Oh, I could yeah. play that part. And then I was consistently like battling with school because my grades were horrible. Yeah. I was like, you know what? F this. I'm going to do it all. I want to play a zombie. I want to play a cop. I want to play a law enforcement. Like, I could do it all. So I'm like, I'm going to go to LA and I'm going to play every role. And till this day, I played basically every role now. So it feels, it feels pretty cool. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Come on, you have to. It's, you, know? it, you have to give yourself, you have to celebrate those, those wins of you saying you're going to do something and then accomplishing it. Yeah. Whether it happened. Ten years ago, five years ago, or last week, you know, some of us forget to like, damn, bro, like I really just did this, or I really did this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you don't. We ourselves, I think, we're our worst critics. Definitely. So we don't. So we, don't <laughs> we don't give ourselves that that recognition. Like, damn, bro, like sometimes you forget because you're just so in the loop. Yeah, and Until then somebody like right now, I'm like, ooh, ooh I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm alive. It's, it's the happy daddies. It's the happy daddy. Ooh, you, ah, you're calling the daddy now. <laughs> but so you're what you're watching this. See, I'm you know, watching novelas, and then I'm novelas. like, man, I can do that. So then, when Instagram came out, mm. um, right away, I turned it into business. I call myself an actress. I'm like, I've never even played anything acting. <laughs> I call myself this model, and I'm like, there was no way I was even close to being a model. But like, I just put myself out there because I'm like. I believed it so much inside of me that I wanted people to believe that. And then the next thing you know, I'm making my Instagram into like, oh, just literally business. Like how people have into business. It was all business. And people would just tag me like, hey, I saw this casting. Oh, hey, I saw this casting. And I've, like, by the way, I took like my first acting class like last year, ever. Yeah, believe it or not. So then I put myself out there as an actress and then people were tagging me to do auditions and then I would ditch class and then I would get like this big script and I'm like memorizing it right and then the moment I would go into an audition I would forget every line I was so nervous like no experience no knowledge like I was clueless yeah. but I just put myself out there I would drive to LA and I remember one time my mom called me she goes um so what's a good movie to watch I'm like none until you see me in one and she's like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah. So, like, that was stuck in my head. I'm like, Geraldine, put yourself out there. Throw yourself out there. So, anyways, I would go to my auditions, forget all the lines. I would walk out, walk out crying. And I would have my cousin in the car. And she's like, what's wrong? I was like, I forgot all my lines. I don't know what I said. She's like, just breathe. It's okay. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not an actor. Maybe I'm not an actress. Maybe I'm not this. And it's always in my head, you know? Yeah. And then finally, finished college. And I actually moved to Miami. I moved to Miami for, like, a good year and just to like I wanted to be away from my family I want to be away from everybody because I needed to focus on myself and I was like figure out what you want but yeah. you have all these distractions family I was like you can't do this you can't do that they're always scared and then you have your friends and then you have the, it's like constantly in your head so I moved to Miami never been to Miami didn't know anybody in Miami never met anybody in Miami I just literally bought a ticket flew what to Miami fuck? and I stayed in a hotel for a week my dad was like freaking out he's like why are you in Miami? And I said, I'm trying to stay away from everybody. He's like, why don't you take your mom? Like, I'm trying to stay away from you guys. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to stay away from everybody. And then he's like, all right, well, you're going to come back. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, all right, well, you know what? If you stay out there for, for another week and you find a place and you find a job, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ship your car because he swore I was going to come back. I said, all right, cool. Nope. That week I found a job. I found a place and I stayed out there in Miami because it was like to prove it to myself, like challenging. But in that time, I had a lot of me time. And when you're by yourself a lot, you're in your thoughts, you like unwind from social media, you unwind from like reality and you're focused on what you truly want as a person. And I'm like, all right, once I finish college, I'm going to drive to L.A. I'm going to rent a freaking studio, wherever I need to live at, just so I can be in that zone and focus in the acting. Yeah. And when I ended up moving to L.A., believe it or not, this is crazy. Uh, well, I'm not going to get into that. But I moved into with these roommates that are, like, big-time social media people. And then during that time, I was, like, you know, 
tagging along with them. And then the next thing you know, they're bringing their friends and I became with their friends. The next thing you know, I'm doing videos with the big YouTubers. And the next thing you know, I'm doing auditions for big casting calls. And then from there, I was just so focused. That like, now I'm like it. where I'm at and yeah. I'm like booking roles. I'm booking commercials. The key is to be consistent. Just stay consistent. Yeah. And just write every, every like now and then I'll write down. I'm like, all right, what did you accomplish? What are your short term goals? What are your long term goals? Sorry, guys. I don't mean to. Bore no, this. no. Hell no. This, this is great. This is amazing because. Yeah. For like what you said earlier that you had to get away from Everyone everybody. Like it everything. didn't. It didn't matter if it was friends, boyfriend. Family. It was family. And that's the hardest part for a lot of people it's is truly it's really really hard, especially because you look up to your parents. Yeah, you want to make them proud. Proud. You want to make them yeah. proud. You want to yeah. you want to be like yo, like I did this. But in order, sometimes what people don't understand is like in order for you to follow your dreams, like you literally have to be that ugly duckling of the family. That was me. Like to me. yeah, like you <laughs> you have you have to because yeah. sometimes they're not going to understand why you're doing it because what we're doing is so. It, it's unsure like today or tomorrow it could uh, and and it's not a like you don't have a a retirement plan in this like there's like when you start this it's not a retirement plan there's no insurance there's no nothing it's yeah. you your dream your passion and hopefully this pays off but it will pay off because i am not ending exactly that exactly. so let's take it slightly back okay. miami you went first week you're going to your second week you said you were well, being actually, alone I, actually i was in my first week so you, but you said you were being, you were alone. I was alone, alone. alone. So yeah. what was the thought process in that moment? Being away from your family for the first time. And I like, turned 21 out there. Turning 21, <laughs> living in a whole different place, other side of the world. Like what was your thought process being alone? How did you feel? What was going through your head? It was the best feeling ever. And I'm going to tell you why, because I had prepared myself mentally months prior to that. I was like, all right, it's all in your head. It's a mind over matter. Yeah. You're Latina. You speak English and Spanish. That is already a fucking given. Two, you have your papers. Not like your parents that had to fight for their papers. Like, you're a citizen. Yeah. Like, there's so many people out there here that, like, you know. You have that advantage. Exactly. No, it, and, and, the people it, are lazy. People you, are lazy you, because it's given to you. And I'm like, Geraldine, write down what you're good at. You have to be ruthless because if you're so nice to some people, they're se lo va pasar. Yeah. The thing, like, in order for someone to listen, and, and I always say this even when, when I coach, if I tell you, hey, try harder, you're going to be like, damn, what the hell? Like, fuck this fool. But when <laughs> I tell you, yo, like, fucking <laughs> try your best, bro. What are you doing? Yeah. You're just like, oh, shit. Like, you really, like, you get, you have that feeling behind your words, that that passion behind in your, in your tone of voice. Because if you're so passive, then people walk all over you and don't believe what you're saying. Exactly. But, the people that are very impactful, they're like, we're talking and we're passionate about what we do. And this is why we talk the way we talk, because yeah. there's weight behind this. There's not like we there's nothing like nobody can understand until like you really start talking about like, oh, that person's passionate about. Yeah. It. Like, hey, how do you like yeah. do like what's it? I want to start a podcast. How do you do it? Let me tell you. <laughs> Let's <laughs> let go. Let me bring it to the root. <laughs> let me bring it to the root. Let, let me give you everything that you're yeah. doing. Let me tell you what you're going to sacrifice. Let me tell you, you have to be ready. All right, all right. You're not ready. Like you're never gonna be hundred percent ready. You're never. No. But it it's that it's that it's confidence. The first step. Yeah, it's the first step. Just doing it, and then it's it's believing in yourself that hey, you know, you are meant to be in this. It's how we said earlier, finding out what your gift is. It's finding something that you're good at without really trying. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, fuck, if I'm really good at this without trying, imagine if I really tried. Imagine like exactly. Ex like, I love that you said that. Imagine because where it starts, yeah. you have to start imagining it and nice. believing in it. Like that's where it starts. Like as a kid, that's why I said as a kid, the kid wants to do this. It wants to do that. It's good. It's beautiful because that's where it starts. That's where like the root of everything starts. Yeah, I heard it from um, Mr. Miami Pitbull. Okay, he's like when you're a baby. Ah, it, see there you go. Right when you're a baby, everybody encourages you to walk. They support you. It's something new to you, and they're like, yo, get up. Come on, you got this. But then once you get older and you want to run and get into your craft, into your dream, mm -hmm. what's the first thing everybody does? Ah, man, don't do it. Ah, it's not for sure. Don't do that. And then though. you start getting in your head, and you start overthinking it. And I, that's one thing, too. Like, I write down stop overthinking stuff. As a woman, we all do it. I don't care. I admit it. I overthink. Every, I almost never thought about coming here. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> hey, hey, whoa. Just kidding. That's the I know. Hey, uh, my, my, my dog ate the keys. I can't go. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> Let me drink some daddy. <laughs> She's like, fuck, maybe I, I was going to use that today. But then you told me daddy was going to be here. I was like, daddy's here. I'm here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, just kidding. Dot, dot, dot. Happy face. Continue. <laughs> winky face. How winky Little, face. The purple devil guy. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Stepping up a little bit. Hey, just kidding. So, <laughs> what what would you tell... I'm going to start this off the rip, and you're going to get thinking to this. Telling a younger self, Me? if you're talking to your younger self... I love this. ...during that time about confidence, believing in yourself, what would you tell that Geraldine back then... And at the same time, talking to uh, a me? young, no, no, a young girl that is like in those same positions. As me. As you. Okay. Um, I love that you brought that up because I actually, I, I, heard, I heard this and I saw this somewhere. It said, how would you s- see yourself if you were talking to your eight-year-old self? And how would you see yourself if you were seeing yourself now as an 80-year-old self now? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I was like, ooh, that kind of hit me. I'm like, well, shit, I'm proud of you. What's up? No, um, I'm actually really proud of myself. But I would tell a younger version of me and someone who's, like, looking up to me or who's in the same position, when you stop caring what people think of you and you just, like, believe in yourself, but, like, okay, how do I believe in myself? Well, what do you want? Write down what you want. Write down what you want and stop caring what everyone thinks of you. That's the biggest thing that people care too much what people think of you. Or what if I do this and that? It, who cares? Do, do they pay your bills? Yeah. Are they the ones going to be like living your life? You live your life. Thanks. It's just believing yourself. Stop caring what everyone thinks of you. And don't take no for an answer. Because that's the worst thing that someone will tell you. It's like, oh, no. Okay, cool. Move on. That's the worst thing someone can tell you. No. Yeah. You might be a little embarrassed, but it's cool. <laughs> but oh, yeah. yeah. You, that, that is one of the, the biggest things is that self-doubt and insecurity of, and I, I just said this yesterday, is really believing in yourself. Like, hey, you have to, you have to understand that no one needs to believe in your dream or in you Nobody. In, order, in order for you to succeed. Nope. It, you can you could be 40, 50, 10, 15 years old. It doesn't matter what age you are. You're going to have a... A bright idea, and nine times out of ten, people are just going to shut it down yep. because it's so out of the ordinary. And especially your family, just especially. because they care. Yeah, and that's something. Even my dad, they, like, they don't, they don't want you, to, they don't want you to, to in quote unquote suffer, right? Like if yeah. it doesn't work out, they don't want you to be let down because then it brings them to their trauma as a childhood and whatnot, and they just care and yeah. It goes on and on. I mean, you have kids, so you you understand more than I do on that part, but yeah. But it's even then because my dad is a entrepreneur, but I didn't figure out his being an entrepreneur until I got this. I got into it for myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, because before, like, I'm. I, I always, I always say it. Me and him had a conversation, and to me, it was like, I didn't understand how much work you had to how to put in in order to grow a business. Yeah. Like I really didn't. I hated the fact that you weren't around. I hated it, and I always like, damn, bro, like. Why can't I be like those other kids where the dad is around at the at the games? Like my mom is my my best friend. Yeah, she was always there with me. She is still there for me. But when I would travel for ball or anything, like she would be there. My dad would. Oh, he's working. And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, why can't I have that? Why yeah. can't like I would talk to my friends at that time, their dads, or be joining around by their dads? Like, damn, why can't my dad do this? But now that I'm older. Now that I've been working with him and for him, I'm like, damn, he set us up so good that now my lifestyle is supported for me working with him. Like, he literally, like, yo, this is this is you if you wanted it. But for me, I know I would be a, in my You didn't eyes. understand. I didn't. Until now that I'm in business for myself and we're, we're working on this, yeah. I know what it is to feel to be. You got to cradle, cradle the baby. You got to yeah. put care to this in order to grow it. And now we're a complete, you know, we're, we're doing our thing. My thing is, like, my dad has his business, and it's always going to be his. I never say, oh, it's mine and my dad's, bro. You know, we live in life. No, 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 it's his. This is my business. I'm going to grow this into what I know I can. Yeah. It's because 
you're never going to take care of somebody else's business unless it's yours. Oh, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like. In and out to you, that's your baby. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like what, like your cousin or sister's baby or brother's baby. Oh my God. So cute. I love them. But you're never going to love that kid unless it's like really, really yours. Like, yeah. Like, you're going to care for your niece or nephew. But until you have your own kid, then that's a different type of love. This is my kid. This is my new kid. Yeah. Like, I have my, my, my kids. I love them to death. But this is also my kid. And I love this to death. And that's just what I, growing up, maturing, is it's maturing. Mm -hmm. Understanding. Like, understanding the process that has to go through for business, for life, for success. It's not the easiest. It's not going to be the prettiest. But the reward will always will overpower and overcome all those dark moments you ever had in your life. Yeah. Those dark moments. Where are we at, dude? We're chilling? Oh, we got a good question coming. We got time for oh, a question. I'm scared. You have a whole list over there. <laughs> no, nah, it's still, it's, it literally, I mean, 2015, you came out, you came out on your shows, right? When was your first, first show that you ever came out in? To be honest with you, I don't even remember. Let me Google search real quick. Now um, I have it actually, I think it was, I honestly did forget. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, Wait, it's take it, so take it, it had. Can I bring up my notes. It had chosen, chosen kin. No, 2015. chosen kin was uh, an actually lead role that I booked. Ooh, it wasn't even lead role. I'm lying. It was a co-star, but I was leading to it. But yeah, it, it was my first real role where I'm like, ooh, like they're doing a whole makeup. I played like this dead girl. By the way, <laughs> playing playing a dead girl is not easy. Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you play dead every day I'm dead I'm alive but I'm dead I'm, but I'm dead <laughs> but I'm, I'm alive dead. again <laughs> fuck you um, that was my first role that I booked as like it was actually showed on Amazon Prime mm. and I'm like ooh that's what it feels like to be famous like I saw myself like okay my five seconds of fame whatever yeah. uh, but it was cool it was, they did all this like zombie look at me and look at me and then um, I looked dead on the floor and that was it. <laughs> that was the first one. That was the first. That was like my Maria biggest. <laughs> this sounds so bad. No, um, the one of the biggest ones that I did was for Netflix, Lucifer. I played a cop. Actually, I have a story about that one. That one's amazing. Ooh. Have you guys seen Lucifer? Yes. Okay, I haven't even watched it myself. That's really bad. I don't watch. You, you, you don't I watch? I actually, believe it or not, I, I say that a lot. I don't know why I'm saying that. Two years ago, I got my first TV in like eight years. I don't like watching TV. I hate watching TV. But I like watching TV now because it's good for acting, and that's something I need to do. Yeah. I just feel like watching TV was a waste of time. So be, That be, sounds horrible because I like to make TV. <laughs> She's in TV, but TV's a waste of time. I'm being too honest right now. <laughs> no, so before we get into uh, Landing Lucifer, and I mean, because yes, that's a big show. Me. That's a big show for, for a lot of people, all the new age and everything. What was one of the darkest moments that you had to go through be leading up to like Miami to LA and and all that, um, because that 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 plays a big part in who you are today. Yeah. So I mean, to not to kind of overview, you went from here to Riverside, Miami, Miami here to LA, and throughout that time, what was like the hardest moment for you that were like, damn? The hardest I would say is just really keeping faith on what you really like believe in yourself because like Thanks. there's days where i'm like yeah but you know life happens bills family and you kind of forget about who you are for a second so i would always tell myself geraldine before you go to bed remember why you want to do this yeah. why do you want to do that remind just reminding myself but it was really hard when i transitioned from like miami to coming back to la because i was like i'm just like a 23 year old girl like who am i yeah like it's a big city. Like, I would look at everything. I'm like, dang, like, it's competition. Do I really want to do this? It was really hard. And then I went from, like, living in a nice home to living in a living room. And I was like, do I really want to do this? Is yeah. it something I really want to do? And then living in L.A. by yourself, like, with people is that you just don't even know. It's really hard. Probably one of the scariest things ever. It, it was hard. But, you know, I wasn't scared. That was the thing. Mm. I was never scared. I wasn't scared because I don't know what it was. I always felt like at home. What I was scared of is not making my parents proud. That is what I was scared about. 
And I think it's because my parents, like, I look up to my parents so much, and they're always, like, so tough on me. I'm like, no, my dad's going to be proud one day. My dad's going to be proud one day. Yeah. And just even in school, like, how I struggled <laughs> 10 different high schools <laughs> to, to graduate, I was like, who am I? <laughs> But I think I I think I know who I am now. <laughs> do you? No, I'm I'm messing with you. Of course I do. I do know who I am now, because I love to do what I. Do. <laughs> um. <laughs> Dang, I feel like partying after this. After all this drinking. Dude, we're not drinking a lot. For don't me, don't yeah. tell our audience that we drink a lot. No, I just I don't really. Drink. You know they always it or not, I they always drink. They, like now that like, the people that we meet like bro how'd you come up with a toast to life I'm like bro I love to drink. <laughs> By the way, oh just kidding. Continue. By the way, what? <laughs> what questions do you have? Speed round. Go for it. No, I'm just kidding. No, you ask me. All right. <laughs> so, Lanny Lucifer, your when? What was your? F- you said you mentioned Lucifer, but was that your biggest and the like the first l- set uh, role that for you were like, damn, I'm kind of good at this. Um. That's actually not the biggest, but that is one of my biggest. Oh. So Lucifer, I played a cop, and <laughs> it was pretty interesting. The story about this was actually when we are done filming, um, they're like, all right, you guys can take off, you know, your uniforms off. And I'm like, or that you can keep it on, whatever. You, you know, we had like off. an hour break. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm still like in the role of a cop. <laughs> so I kept it on. And there was a cafeteria in the Warner Brothers studio. And I told my buddy, I said, I said, hey, don't take it off. Like, play with me as a cop. Let's just go. To, I just want to see how it feels <laughs> to go into a cafeteria. We're walking in the studio, right? Everybody's moving out of our way to, like, get into the cafeteria. I go in there, like, all serious. My hair's, like, pinned back and everything. I was like, what the fuck is like that? And <laughs> the people, the cocineros are like, hola, hola, mucho gusto, gracias por tu servicio. And, <laughs> and I'm, like, literally playing it all. I'm like... <laughs> But it deep as I was like, fuck, I want to laugh so hard. I was like, no, Geraldine, no, you're acting mode right now. Okay, you're walking, you're walking. And I'm walk- I even got a discount on my food. I even got a discount. Oh, on you're my- going to hell? No. You're going to hell? <laughs> Dude, it was so good, though. Like, I never felt so respected. Like, wow. Like, I'm telling you, the cocineros were, like, nervous. And, like, they're like, mucho gusto por tu servicio. Like, talking. <laughs> so, that's what they were talking. ¿Cómo te va? ¿Está bien? ¿Cómo te va? Muy bien. People moving out of the line to, so I can cut. Open like, the door for you. Putting I mean, your chair out. Todo. The most. The most. Ya, ca- then, ya acabaste? Deja, deja agarrar. I was about to pay my food. Like, oh, we'll give you a discount. This and that. And then I was like, dang. Did you feel bad? No. <laughs> no, I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel bad because I didn't do anything out of like something crazy. crazy. You were technically still playing your role. I got a discount. I got my door open. Ooh, I feel so bad. No, didn't feel bad at all. <laughs> what was there to feel bad about? And then I went back to say, I'm like, oh shit, that was pretty cool. But everybody believed it. Uh, but yeah, then I went back to set filming. But that was cool. <laughs> so what was so? Which what was your ah? Uh, I made a moment. When, like, so for the people that don't know, you have been a host for, like, Telemundo, right? Running social media, doing doing PR type of things. You do you do a lot. Like, if people follow you on IG, if you haven't, go follow right now. I don't know what the hell you're doing on everywhere. You can't even keep up with my stories. Like, yo, are you coming? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, she's like, I got this day open, this day open. Tell me what day. I'm like, bro, what? Who does that? Yeah, di- like, Dylan and they know, like, I'm very precise. Like, it's. It's either just a Saturday, and we're playing a couple weeks ahead. You're just like, I have 23, 24, 25, 27, 30, 40. I'm like, what? Like, what day? And then it would come to it, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was like, dang. I just want to put it out there. She canceled on us last week. She did. did. She did. And then the other <laughs> week. <laughs> and then prior. And then prior, prior. So this has been in the no, worst for a while. It's so been bad. in the worst. You guys are making me so, oh, no, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's because she's from Riverside. It's because I'm, yeah, I, he said it. I didn't. He said it. Okay. <laughs> now nah, you know it, it's it's always a for sure. It's always a blessing to be able to sit down, taking that time. But again, so what was like for you? What was that moment that you had to take in and be like, damn, like I think I made it. I think I made. It. I think I'm good at this. Well, believe it or not, and I know I said this like a million times. Believe it or not, um, <laughs> it actually happened to me three months ago. Wow. Um. I can't say much because I don't get in trouble. <laughs> but I filmed something really big for a big t- TV network, and I had to fly out of the country. 
and I went MIA on social media, and I had to because I was part of the, the job. When I made that, that was and it. yeah, it hopefully this show comes out in January. That's all I can say. Exciting. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, I'm excited. What's I'm your what's what was the emotions, the feeling? Um, this was it definitely put me out of my comfort zone. Challenging. Yeah. Um, it took me a year to audition for this. Oh. And that's a lot of people that don't understand that. That people think, oh, acting is easy or this and that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. This took me a whole year to audition, back to back to auditions and it was crazy, and especially because of COVID during that time. Like, I mean, still COVID, but like during that time, it's like flying, and you had to get the shot, and you had to do this, and that, and it was just a lot of back and forth, and a background check, and then this and that. Especially because of COVID. So when I flew out there, I was this close to not get the part, and I had my biggest depression down moment. I literally felt like my life was over. I remember crying in the shower. This is me being vulnerable. <laughs> crying yeah. in the shower, laying down for three hours, just water hitting me, just crying. I felt so lost, confused. I was like, am I even meant to be in L.A.? It, it really brought me to such a dark side where I was like, I think I'm just going to go back home to Riverside. And for me to think that was like, whoa, something's wrong with you. But then I snapped out of it, and I started praying, manifesting, I mean, you name it, for like hours and crying, like super novela, sad, Rosa Guadalupe moment. Oh. I mean, you name it, okay? <laughs> it happened. Yeah. And I prayed, and they were already filming. They were already filming. I was ready to get sent home, okay? And I prayed, and I said, God, you're the only person that can change everything. If it's meant for me, it'll be for me. The next thing you know, they're knocking on my door. They said, someone got sick. You're taking over. We're going to start all over again. And, like, I can tell you the full story, but that's another episode. It's take another 30 minutes. <laughs> but uh, we're not going to hit that. But when wow. I did that and I started filming, and now that I finished filming, and then now I'm getting, like, calls from, like, the production and how they're going to manage my social media, how they're going to do this and that. They're like, you did it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, when I see it on TV, then I know I made it. Because, you know, L.A. is just, uh, man, it's a game. It but that's when it hit me, and I was like, it was like God talking to me. It's like, no, you belong here. Stay. Just stay. Okay, let's give it up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, you know what? Like, the vulnerability. It's a power. Well, that's something I stepped into this year. Because back then, I was like, I'm Tupac. What you mean? <laughs> Hell Mary. I went from Care Bear to Tupac. <laughs> you know about Care Bear? Uh, uh, yeah. You know about Care Bear? <laughs> no, but yeah. Nah, it, it, it's a... You know what? Like, it it is something that... People that are special that we go through that we don't really say about. Yeah. The beauty about us here in this podcast is that we base this on mental health. We base this on having that uncomfortable conversation, bringing up these topics that we really don't bring up. Like, you go to a party, you're not going to bring, oh, yeah, I just fucking cried in the parking lot, dog. <laughs> What's up, dog? <laughs> They're going to be like, take a shot. Uh, <laughs> take a shot. <laughs> be like, Get a daddy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Mental health, get a daddy. Call one eight hundred daddy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tag Happy Dad after this for sure. Yo, can I can I shout out to Dad, Happy Dad? I need to know who the owner is. Uh, full send. Uh, John. I'm gonna do a whole Kyle, commercial. You should. Improv like daddy. <laughs> I know. Hey, turn the red lights on. <laughs> Are you going through mental illness? <laughs> Call one eight hundred daddy right now. <laughs> Happy Daddy. Happy um, Daddy will make you happy. We're clipping. We're going to clip this. We're clipping this for sure. Um, we're going to clip this. <laughs> TikTok, and he made me do this. <laughs> okay. We all signed the waiver. Did we? Did we? Because I don't think I remember that. I was too busy drinking Happy Daddy. <laughs> we're, we're done. We're, we're done talking about Daddy here. All right, continue. Continue. We're back in. Okay. We're back in. Um, focus. Um, but the most special people do talk to themselves and fight a lot a lot of demons that not a lot of people know. I got a lot of demons. Yeah. And <laughs> and, and for f the way I look at it is like, yo, like I we do address them. We we won't ever let them win. But sometimes they do get the best of us, especially in moments that are that like it's so unsure. You're working so hard for something. And you're not getting nothing in return. You're just like, damn, bro. Like, am I really going to do this? And that was me for a minute. Yeah. Like, you were laying down in a shower. Like, 
literally for three hours wondering straight, would, oh my god i'll never forget that like that self-doubt that that thing in the back of your head that's telling you like mm, you sure about this but you know deep down inside this is what you really want to do and you're trying to figure out how why what what's gonna happen when is it gonna happen yeah so it's that moment that you're just like manifestation people don't believe in it Mani manifest everything but also pray and pray believe in something like believe in something i mean i Believe in something yeah. bigger than you and a higher power than you. Yeah. Pray to it, whatever the case may be. But just know that whatever you believe in is going to bless you at the perfect time that your life needs it. Yeah. It may not be at this very moment, but it might be at the next moment that you are like, I'm ready to quit. Yeah, because and you just, boom. you don't know. Yeah. And my dad would always come. He's like, how are you paying rent? How are you doing this? ¿Cómo lo estás and uh, how are you doing? I'm like, dad, it's not OnlyFans, so chill. Because for a moment, he did think that. Dylan like, has an OnlyFans. My, huh? Dylan has an OnlyFans. Oh, I'm here for it. I support it. No. What's up? Happy Daddy's, I'll subscribe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have a we have we have a we have a business uh, like, OnlyFans. I'm just totally kidding. We have a business. Listen, I and I'm not against OnlyFans. Hey, power to you, shit. <laughs> Who knows? I might come through with that one day. <laughs> but it can be business. Listen, giving giving uh, lessons. On I how to act. don't judge. You do what you got to do because I've had to do things that I had to do, things that put me out of my comfort zone and not something like sexual, crazy. But yeah. But there was a point where my dad's like, how are you paying rent? How are you living by yourself? How are you doing this? I'm like, dad, I don't even know. I don't even know how I'm doing it, do but you, I'm doing it. From the shows that you came out, like, do you get res like residual income like every time? Honestly, the pay wasn't the best, to be yeah. honest. But I think because me, I'm, I'm such a hustler. Like, I just like to hustle and make money, and I can't stay still. For, like, the people that are wondering, though, like, so you filmed all these other shows, you know, years back and yeah. stuff. Like, every time people watch over, like, do you still get a check from, from that? Sometimes, and I'm like, sometimes, I'm like, really, 20 cents? I mean, it has happened. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But then so, there has been some time like, oh, I did this three years ago. Okay, that's a cool $500, $400 check. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm not like yet at yeah. that level. Yeah. <laughs> this is me being humble. <laughs> no, I, I'm not that level yet where I'm like, okay, cool. I can make this amount of money yet. But I also deal with so many other things like social media. And acting is completely different. Explain. I hate the word influencer. I just call myself content creator. Oh, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's, like, it's not fuck. your fault. Hey, let's redo the intro, didn't it? Let's, do <laughs> it. let's redo the intro right now. <laughs> Go. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> I'm just kidding. This is Geraldine. She is a not an influencer. No, I'm a, She's a content creator. But listen, content creating on social media yeah. and TikTok is so different than doing auditions as an actor. Yeah. Because as an actress, when I've gone to auditions right away, sometimes if I ask me, do you have social media? I'm like, yeah. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? And sometimes it's a bad thing. Mm, explain. Reality TV acting and social media it's all like They're clash yeah it clashes you don't see actors doing reality you don't see reality doing actors it's like a small percentage you don't see influencers really as an actor it's no. it's a whole different job so i try to manage both because where i made my most money believe it or not is social media not acting it's social media wow that's crazy but that's what has paid my bills oh, thank god <laughs> Ooh, yeah. so what, what's that what's that switch that you got to turn on for the people that I mean, when you're young and er when everybody's young, like, oh, yeah, I could be an, I'm gonna be an actress. I want to do this. But you're really in this. You're in this industry. You're in the content I'm, creation. I'm in there. I'm in there. <laughs> you're, no, like, you got you to gotta, you gotta give yourself those flowers. You can say you've gotten roles and you've done what you've done because you have a talent. Not just by luck, not just by someone putting your name out there. It, you're yeah. talented in what you do, which is why you get the roles. You're talented in content creating also which is why you're supporting your lifestyle and your living. But what is that difference, that mental switch. change, that switch that you, like, you go from being Geraldine to being whatever the actress you had to play or whatever role you got to play? It's just balancing, knowing how to balance. And what has helped me is I do a lot of praying, manifestation, motivational like videos on YouTube. Oh. Eric Thomas is one of my favorite Favorite motivational speakers. Yes. <laughs> Are we having a moment? We're having a moment. Can we cheers? Yeah, we got to. Titties, ass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I not supposed to say that? Titties, ass. Oh, you said okay. Edit my version and let his version come out. 
Mm. No, that was Eric a- Thomas is one of my favorites, and it's not for everybody because he's very like aggressive. But I like aggressive because I'm, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> what's up? <laughs> hey, no, hey, what's that? They're saying hey, that. Hey, what's I love Riverside. What, I love my Riverside. There's a song that says Riverside, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're gonna play. Riverside, we're gonna find it. Mother- you should play that on the, on the background, like. Oh, I, we can, we can though. I got this. Should we like pretend to dance a little bit and then you add it? Hey, 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 do you guys hear it? Do you guys? Oh, we can't hear it, but I know you can hear it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, so yeah, we're fully aware that I'm from Riverside. Moving on. <laughs> we're fully aware. Fully aware. So, so Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas is one of my favorite motivational speakers. He has helped me a lot yeah. through my journeys, even to this day. Like, I'll wake up, I'll try, put my phone away to the side, go on, like, my TV or whatever, and I'll put a motivational speaker on. Yeah. And I love um, how he talks, how he's so direct. Yeah. He's so blunt. I love that. I hate, I strongly dislike, <laughs> let me word that, I strongly dislike when someone's too nice or, like, trying to, you know, do yeah. this. And I'm like, nah, dude, just give it to me. But Eric Thomas has been one of my saviors yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, that when that was that's one of the guys that I inspired to really? one day. Yeah. Like listening to how he talks about his wife with MS and the reason why he moved to San Diego is because his wife needed it. So he needed yeah. to get he was like the house in San Diego was this point something million. I got a school contract for that. He was like, It's not me anymore, it's that drive for my wife. I want my wife to live longer. So when I'm listening, as I said, it's direct. I can't listen to someone that's going to just be nice. Be like, oh, well, if you try hard. No, nah, I'm like, bro, I'm bored right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> like, bro, I'm so You know, one of the shit. things that he said, and I don't know if like this can relate to a lot of people, but to me it does to this day. Shoot it. He said, I took one of my buddies, or one of his buddies took him out to the to the beach. Yes. You, know, I'm going, you know where I'm going with this? this. And... I think he put him underwater. Like, he, they went underwater. But you know that feeling where you, like, almost felt like you're drowning and you're, like, desperate for air? That's the same feeling that you need to feel to succeed or to want something. And that's how I've always felt growing up when I wanted to do the acting and the entertainment and this and that. And I'm sometimes, like, am I crazy? I'm like, no, like, I'm desperately, like, wanting it, but in a good way. Yeah. Because desperate is not a cute word. <laughs> no, but you're obsessed, though. But I'm that, obsessed and desperate for, like, this this want of, like, wanting to, to yeah. do more. Yeah. But that, that's something he said. And I'm like, oh, that's, I can relate to you. Nah, that, I love you. That was, I think, for everybody <laughs> watching, like, that, if everybody can knows about this video because it's one of the most, like, trending videos ever. Like, if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, breathe, then, you then you'll will be succeed. successful. Yeah. Yes. Ah! So, to me, that was like, okay, cool. Like, that's what you mean. And just... Maturing in the way that learn, I can understand these messages that are being given to me. Because we've heard messages all throughout our life. But if we're not mature enough to be able to understand it, then we're not going to listen to it. Until you hit that certain point in your life where... Or something bad happens to you because yeah, pain, pain is when you grow. Pain, pain is where you'll grow. Yeah. And it'll teach you the hard way. <laughs> yes. You know, and us, I'm very hard hit. I'm not going to learn until I learn it my way. And that's me. Oh, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell me. <laughs> you can tell me, but I, I want to learn the hard way. Why? Because I don't want to blame you for what I'm going through. But then you don't know the value of it. Yeah. It's like kids that are rich. They don't know the dollar of a. Of a they don't know the value of a dollar. Yeah, like because they never had to work for it. Yeah, it, like I was. I was balling <laughs> off ten dollars prior. Now people want to get. I want to earn thirty dollars a, a month, a uh, fucking hour. I'm like, bro, like you work like you're ten dollars. <laughs> uh, you can't tell me you worth like you. There was, there's a there's a sound, there's a video. Like, if you want to spend without looking at your bank account, you better work without looking at the clock. I was like, oh. That's something I, I was, agree with you a thousand percent. Yeah, like, don't. Because there's some people who can be talented. Yeah. But lazy as fuck. And Every there's time. people who Every are time. hardworking. Everywhere. And will beat. Yeah. Hard work beats talent. Every, I promise you, everybody in this room we're so self-critical of ourselves that we do a lot and we all feel like we're not doing the most. That's me every day. That, we always that, like that. That's how I know everybody in here that that's how we feel. That's what yeah. we do. But because we feel like that, because that happens. <laughs> they're they're high-fiving. <laughs> they're high-fiving, by the way. They're I wish you could turn the camera over there. Man. You guys can really see. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me. That's Mama, actually Jose, it. Dylan, and, and Pepe out there. But because we feel that way, that's why we we push so hard. 
like you have to like people have to understand that you're gonna go a little bit crazy when you pursue your dream and your vision because you're going to sleep thinking about it and how to make it work you're waking up trying to make that idea work and then throughout the day you're trying to think of other ideas to try to make it work like it's not just a switch that you can turn off and on not right now not when we start because when we start if i'm starting this there's 10 10 000 other people doing the same thing i do but i'm gonna promise you that i'm gonna be that one that's different because I am who I am, and I cannot be How duplicated. How do you say different? I want to ask you this. How do you say different? How do I say? I'm just authentic. Okay. To myself, like I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to please anybody. I'm not trying to be anybody else. Like yeah, I get inspired by other people every time I see Keith as Johnson. As you should. As you should. But I bring it to my own my own way. You know what I mean. So when I say I'm different, it's like when I go into the room, you're gonna know who I am. Not because I'm loud and obnoxious. It's because I'm gonna carry myself with my confidence. I may be so insecure inside, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you I'm very confident in what I do because I talk about what I do and I'm very confident. I'm very pride. I'm very prideful in what I do and I'm very proud of what I do. You ain't gonna beat me. You can, uh, every time it says put me in put me anywhere, you ain't gonna outwork me. But that's the mindset you should have. And if you love it, yes. People, I agree with that 100 percent because if you don't love it, ooh. Pe- people like doing certain things people like being in social media people like being in content it's creating all that attention too <laughs> yeah literally trust but me i being in la man i've i've seen it i've seen it all <laughs> it it it's it's oh. <laughs> it's it's scary for a lot of people it's super but yeah. people don't understand that unless you're in it and you're daily weekly monthly in this situation without any like holding back then like we're vulnerable bro like everything we do is out in social media for the most part everything is that like well pretend some people pretend yeah but some people give up because it becomes too much it is because they can't handle the pressure uh, diamonds are are made under pressure Ooh, híjole. We diamonds. A ver, híjole. <laughs> híjole. i am from riverside we get it <laughs> <laughs> We get it. We, we get, get it. it. Okay. I'm from Riverside. <laughs> I'm just. Gonna, <laughs> no, we didn't say anything. I didn't say nothing. I'm just gonna tattoo it. We get it. I'm from Riverside. <laughs> right here on the neck. <laughs> oh wait, from that one movie. What was that one movie? Uh, no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> Not a single letter. <laughs> from Riverside. Now I'm gonna have a big ass bell right here. <laughs> I'm gonna get some earrings like the bells. Y todo. <laughs> Buchona vibes. Buchona vibes. <laughs> Three dots. <laughs> no, yeah, diamonds. <laughs> diamonds are are built, are made under pressure, and that's the thing. Keep going until you really can't, and and even when you think you can't, yo, keep going because you're gonna figure out that you really can do this, and it's gonna teach you so much about yourself. Like, stop complaining. Ain't no one gonna fucking save you. And, and I love that you said that. Stop complaining. Yeah, stop. That is like. Oh, you have no idea. Ooh, that's like my biggest one. I hate when people complain. Okay, why? Tell us why. Because it's just an excuse for yourself to believe and feel and people feel bad for you. I hate when people complain. I'm like, dude, the fact that you can get out of bed and walk you should be thankful. The fact that you have a roof over your head, the fact that you can walk to your fridge and get some water, you should be thankful. People don't have that. Facts. People do that for you. So Facts. like stop complaining. And I hate lazy people. I'm over here venting. Um, nah, no, talk, talk your <laughs> shit. Toxica. Talk your <laughs> shit. No, people that are lazy and like are complainers, I will literally stay away from me. Remove on Instagram. Remove, delete, block. Oh. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's just. When people got to go, they got to go. But it's normal. You, you have your moments. Yeah. You know, I, dude, I have a lot of moments. <laughs> Tell us one of the biggest moments you've had. Uh, the biggest moment that I had was when I was out of, out of the country, the one I just told you about. That was one of my biggest moments where I like, had a breakdown. So coming back from all that, going, through, going through mental health at that point, going through hard. all that, what, what, how do you get out of it? Well, how do you get I out had of, a great support system. Get, how do you get out of the hole you dug yourself into? Well, I actually felt like I just got out of it like two weeks ago. Shit. That's crazy, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> He's like, I want to see you cry. <laughs> um, 
at, coming back from that show mentally, I was like such in a high level where my uh, therapist and psychiatrist was like, you're going to crash when you come down because everything that comes up must come, come down. down. And it's like, you're going to come down because you were such in a like, by the way, I was in this hotel and I <laughs> can't say too much, but I didn't have my phone with me. They took our clocks. They even covered our, our hole where you like see outside the window, the, the door, because everything was like super, because of, of, of security and being a different country and, and COVID, it was like a whole mess. I was literally by myself in a room just watching YouTube videos. And that was a, a good thing where I can like, you know, manifest and all that. But it, it was really hard because you're so, in, it's just you and yourself and your feelings and your emotions and that's it, nobody else. Yeah. But when I got out of it and I'm back into reality and social media and the world and work and this and that and bills and blah, blah, blah. I like, I froze yeah. for two weeks. I froze. I was like depressed, emotionally, like what's going on? Then my birthday was coming up and I couldn't think about my birthday. And then I'm like, it was just so much. And I had to pretend to be like, everything was okay when it wasn't okay. But I had such an amazing support system from like the UK. I'll well, just kind of <laughs> throw it out there. <laughs> What's a different country? <laughs> can we can, can we edit that? I don't know what we just said. What was whatever? Camera broke down everything. I don't know. Anyways, the, the UK cheap ass fools. <laughs> I mean, I can say that. I can't say too much, but I think I said that. <laughs> this is my this is, and, it, and the show was called <laughs> and everybody. La Rosa was on the show. de Guadalupe in the UK, eh? La Rosa de Guadalupe. <laughs> Um, I had an amazing support system yeah. and they were calling me consistently. How are you feeling? How are you? And I'm like, I'm good. Okay. You, well, you, everybody you had, else on the show isn't. So how are you? Okay. You, and I'm you like, had your therapist and psychiatrist over there in the UK and here calling. They called me here and over there. They were checking on me every day, Oof. every day. And, and then every day I had to fill a form. How do you feel about today? Is that, is that something that, that act, actresses, actors like have like that resource? Or is it um, something like a, it some, was a personal it decision? On the, no, it depends on the production. Ooh. And it depends on what you're doing and you're filming. It's always different. It's And then their budget <laughs> as well, too. Um, we have no budget here. Sorry. But over there, <laughs> no, actually, over there, <laughs> since I already said the UK, <laughs> um, they, all, they all care about mental health. But here, it's like you're kind of on your own. You have to figure it out or yeah. you know, apply for it. But till this day, like recently, last week, I got a call. Hey, how are you doing? We're just checking on you. So how are and you And I'll doing? let it out. And I'm like, oh, God, this is what it feels like to, to have feelings. <laughs> but, yeah, they've been, they've been amazing. And trying to transition from what I went through. And then, again, you have to remember, I auditioned for this for a whole year. It was a lot of emotions back and forth. Am I going to do it? And I always told myself, and I have this in my notes, before you hit 30, you have to book something huge that's going to change your life. But for the better, of course. Literally, a month before when I went, I had just booked that. So before I hit 30. So it was like a lot of pressure. It, it's, it was all me. It's a me thing. Yeah. But, yeah, that's something that I just kind of got over a few weeks ago. It, did, it was hard. It was hard. If you stay, if you stay tuned this long. No, it's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take it for team. If you stay tuned this long, make sure you're subscribing, you're sharing, you're sharing the message, and you're following all the platforms. Again, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Um, for you, what is your biggest motivation in being in this realm that you're in? Because it's not easy. Do you feel like being a actress, being a woman in this industry is the easiest or uh, an advantage in any sense, any form? Well, yes and no. And why I say that is because being a female, we do get a lot of, like, you know, free entrances to, to things or discounts. <laughs> Let's be real. But when it comes to our career and job opportunities, it's really hard and it sucks. A lot of men pretend to be cool with you, and the next thing you know, they're – sliding your DMs or emailing you and saying very inappropriate things. This actually just happened to me recently where someone that I worked in 2018, he was like a director and a writer for like this big film. Um, I had to block him <laughs> and I don't care. I'll say it out loud. I don't care. I put him on blast. He literally wrote a whole script on how he would want to sexually harass me 
And to the point where I had to block him because it was like over 20 emails. And I'm talking about paragraphs. And it has happened to me consistently. It's really, really hard when it comes to the entertainment as a woman. A lot of men see that you're good looking or they see something in you. They just want to take something away from you. Yeah. Take advantage. They will take advantage. And it has happened to me in from artists. I mean, you, art, you can name it. From regular people to your most famous person. And my DMs are emailing me. I've had it. But so, do you it's feel be, because of your platform, the way, the way you look, you present yourself, what you do, people just think they misinterpret who you are. They just think like, "Hey, you're all this, but you're really not that." So I just oh, want, all the time, all the time. People that I've met through mutual friends are like, "Dang, I had seen your social media or what you do." Yeah, I thought you were stuck up. Or I thought you were, like, this girl from L.A. or this. And then That's, we got to know you. are like, oh, we can relate. Well, yeah. She's actually normal. Yeah, she's actually cool. <laughs> she's, I think she's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it sucks. So what kind of wall did that bring to you? It, like, what, what did it make you do as a, as, a, as a person? So, like, because when you go through trauma, when you go through certain events, it changes you. It makes you be a certain type of way. And relationships. <laughs> yeah, like, if... Now, how the way we are is like how we talked about off camera. I can know you for so long and I'm ready to cut you off as soon as my love and my like everything is just questionable. You do something to me. I'm not going to forget it. And I'm just going to I'm going to go away. I'm that type of person. So for you going through all this, what did what did that teach you? What did what did you learn from it? And who did you become after all of this? Well, to be quite honest with you, I think it's still teaching me. Mm. It's something that I still battle yeah. uh, with. I, I'm still trying to figure that out because we can all pretend like we don't care. Facts. And avoid it. But in reality, like, it's just you and your emotions trying to, like, fight this. Till this day, I have to pretend sometimes like I don't care. And it's really, really, really hard. And I'm like... Should I show my feelings, but then take advantage of it? Then you're being vulnerable. Then this, and then it's like a, a, a consistent thing in your head. I'm still trying to figure that out. I can't even answer that. Mm. I try to avoid it as much as I can, but it's truly, deeply, really hard. So do you believe in true love? I do believe in true love. And happiness? What is happiness. happiness? What is happiness to you? Happiness for me is having, being at peace with yourself and stop giving a fudge what people think about you. Stop. Like, it doesn't matter. Just being at peace with yourself. We're all going to eventually pass away. We all have to pay bills. Everybody in this world is going through something. Everyone. I'm not the one that's like, oh, I feel bad for you. No, I don't. Because everybody's going through it. Thanks. But I think the way my dad raised me and what I've been through, mentally, I am so emotionally strong where I know how to remove certain situations or people out of my life. But I still deal with it. It's still hard. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm still battling to this day. I'm still trying to learn that. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that's... Life is an ongoing teacher. Yeah. It's going to teach you shit today, tomorrow, the week, after, that night, that morning. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just the way you look at it, the way you... Your perception of what event is happening. Right now, we, I just explained a certain event that happened to us. And it was literally a culture shock for a lot of people. And it's not that I've been in there a lot of times, but it's just like, yo, like, whatever this person, if they're coming at me negatively, they're just missing something. Yeah, and that's their reflection of how they are about themselves. Yes. It has nothing to do with you yeah, at like, all. Like, the uh, one one funny event uh, was last Saturday. When you canceled last Saturday, I went to work. Um, <laughs> thank you for letting everybody know that I canceled last week. By the way, I was sick, and he's like, yeah, you sound like shit. Continue. <laughs> You did say that. She was like, oh. You're like, oh, yeah, you do sound like shit. <laughs> I was like, wow. I did. Bury gonna, me to the ground. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie about that. But I want to work. I know. No time I'm fed. I was actually sick. He's like, he was ready to be like, you're lying. He's like, oh, no, damn. You really sound like shit. I was like, cap. <laughs> That's cap. I was like, dang. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> Dude, seven in the morning. At 7 in the morning, if I don't know how much shit can happen at that time. And there was just this person in line at 7-Eleven, favorite store ever, 7-Eleven, that there was this girl just so mad, like, 
putting attitude at the clerk. And I'm like, bro, it's seven in the morning. Why the fuck are you so mad so early? Like, but you never know. You don't. But we said it two weeks ago, and it's like I could be going through shit. It's it's my it's not your fault what I'm going through. So it's why not- so why am I gonna why am I gonna give you that energy? Because if whatever we're going through and whatever you're going through, if we both would have just showed that today, this would not be as fun and as cool conversations we're having. You know what I mean? Like. You get you feel the energy right away. Mm-hmm. You know when someone is coming with some bullshit. You know when someone's just like, eh, I don't, I don't want to be here. Then don't be here. You don't want to be somewhere. Don't go. Like whether it's a family party, a friend party. Like I've had to tell certain somebody like, oh, I'm gonna go. they invited me to this this party, but this was gonna be there, so I don't know if I'm gonna go. Why the f- if you're gonna guess it, why are you gonna go? Don't go. It is where it is. They're gonna text you. Oh, where are you at? Don't worry about it, bro. Like. Don't don't put yourself in situations that you have to question about you going. Don't do it. Because at the end of the day, every time you got to question something like that, it's not going to turn out the best. And you're going to leave that place and be like, damn, I should have never came. Like, I literally don't. There's only, <laughs> never mind, I'm not going to say I don't have those places. There's only one place I can say I regret going. My guy over there knows where, where that was. <laughs> <laughs> but I go because of my guy. Um. But yeah, if you got a question where you're going and you don't know the energy you're going into, everybody knows where you're getting. We're old enough to know. You like I that, mean, we're humans. We what, all What what's that what's that uh our parents phrase? Ya estás grandecito para saber lo que haces. <laughs> yeah. I know that one. That's their favorite. Ya estás grandecito para saber lo que haces. Be responsible. Your buddy over there looks a little impatient. Oh, no, no. <laughs> They're, it's because they're, they're pinging him. I'm putting him on blast. They're pinging him right now. Checking the time in the background. You sure? Yeah. I, We're good, though. We're good. such a good We're already... worker. Ah. Ah. El Dylan, El Dylan. Everybody knows Dylan. Go follow him. Go show your DM. He's open. Another, <laughs> he's, he's like 7 Eleven, open 24 7. Okay, I'm sorry, Dylan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Le- we'll leave that for the do the do or drink one. Sorry, <laughs> be branded. Um. All right. So, what do we got coming up for you besides your secret project? Is there anything else you're working into? Um. You love being in Hollywood. Do you love being in this scene? Uh, I wouldn't say I love being in Hollywood. I think. I just love to be here because it keeps me on my feet and I'm motivated and I see all these people like creating and filming and it just reminds me like staying on your, you know, your feet. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind going back to Riverside. <laughs> what's, the area, Riverside. what's the area code? What's the area code? 951. Baby. The 951. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 951. Um, yeah, so being in L.A. is cool because it motivates me. And what was yeah. your other question? Because I totally forgot. <laughs> it's a 951 out here. It's because you threw me off with that 951. No, you said. No, 909, no. 909, no. 951. It's all about the 626. Yes, sir. Anyways, what was your next question? <laughs> if you if you can, is there a quote like, is there a quote that you live by when you go through a dark moment? The only one is make... Fear your best friend and don't take no for an answer. Oh. Damn. Because fear, we always live in fear. Oh, what if this? Oh, what if that? It's, you're scared. Yeah. Who cares? All they can say is no. And I've said this earlier. All they can say is no. Okay, go on and ask again. <laughs> Come back a few months later and ask again. <laughs> Who cares? Prepare yourself. And just keep going. Life right. keeps going. Life is a bitch and then you die. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> just, just make sure she's beautiful. And be uncomfortable of being. Be comfortable in the most uncomfortable situations. Yes. Um, honestly. People don't like change. We all have to change. <sighs> Gotta change like we the seasons. We all have to change. I change like the seasons. Mentally, physically, emotionally, jobs, careers. Boyfriend, people, girlfriends. Friends, that too. <laughs> Damn, who hurt you? <laughs> Life, Ooh, hurt you. life, bro, life. Oh, single life all day. <laughs> Why is that? Are you looking? Are, are you taking applications? I should have never said that. You shouldn't, but... Valeo, verga. 
That's it. I'm actually currently taking applications, and I truly mean that. I'm not kidding. Requirements. Let's see. Throw it. My requirements are being confident. I need a confident man. Okay. Because there's a lot. I get it. We're all insecure in our own ways. We get that. Confident in a way where you understand my career, my lifestyle, because I am all over the place, but in a good way, right? <laughs> I'm all over the place with, like, my career, right? Yeah. What was that? What was that? No, nothing. It was a, it's a, it's a hand Yeah, we're going to pretend like that didn't happen. Continuing. Uh, <laughs> I saw your little pasito tuntun over there. <laughs> El pasito Get a little pasito tuntun, 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 tuntun all the way to the door saying something. Okay. <laughs> He's representing the 626. And your little caballo dorado, I don't know what he did over there. He doesn't okay. know how to dance. No, I do not dance. He doesn't. Can we actually bring him on camera? Of course. I think everybody's going to want to know who he is. Oh, everybody knows who he is. Okay, forget that. Moving on. He, <laughs> he can sit on Santa's lap real quick. Um, so, back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I thought it was a motivational podcast and it turned into So what was your question? I have no idea where we went to. <laughs> um Wow. Yeah, kinda weird, huh? Oh, single life. Yeah. Um I am single. I try to put myself on a dating world in the dating app world. Oh. Yeah. A lot of people are like, Is this really you? <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, what what do you mean? Oh, I just, I thought you were, like, uh, somebody else. I'm like, no, it's me. Like, they're DMing me. Yeah. And then they're like, do you have Snapchat? And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, damn, you're so good looking. Too bad you're a waste. You don't end up on Snapchat? No. This is Dylan, everybody. Oh, that make was sure. ugly scream, by the way. My bad. This is my guy right here. This is my guy. By the way, he loves him. <laughs> oh, I love you. Hey, chill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're out of control. We're chilling. We're chilling. Um, Se puso bravo la cosa. So, the dating world has been. I we all know. LA all right. Sucks. So give us give us your <laughs> give you your best your best advice on love. <laughs> I'm trying to give myself that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think the way I am as a person, yeah. I'm very direct. I'm very independent. Yeah. And I was actually telling them earlier before you. I don't know where you went. <laughs> And <laughs> you were somewhere. Um, no, it, it's hard. It's truly hard because of my career and me being independent. And I mean, I mean, I wouldn't mind being independent to somebody, but like, where you at? <laughs> uh, totally kidding. It's just my career. I think my career, even my family, my cousins are like, how do you deal with Zany World? Like, I could never be with the girl. I'm like, well, thanks. You know? It's hard. It, it, it's it, hard. It takes a certain it takes a certain person to understand and to accompany when you're. I just in haven't this met that special person. There's been a couple of times where I thought, and I get disappointed. I'm like, I'm out. And then he's like, add me on Snapchat. <laughs> Dude, you get that Snapchat request for real. Or or the next thing you know, this is one actually one of my rules that when I'm talking to someone, I don't like to follow them on Instagram. Do not on social media. Follow us on IG, on IG, though, please. <laughs> I do follow you. <laughs> please. No, I don't like to follow them I, on social media. I like media having the blue check mark on them. Because then I have all their crazy side girls coming at me. And it has happened so many times. They're trying to hack Toxic. my Instagram. Ooh. Ooh. I've had those girls hack, trying to hack my Instagram. My guys, make sure you know <laughs> who Dang. you're going out with, dog. No, I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know him. Even though I know him. I'm like, I don't even know him. <laughs> I'm out, but you'll never hear from me again. I'm like, I'm out. Too much drama. You're, you're fast to leave? I am. It's always me who ends it. It's mm. always me who ends it. It's Protect, always me who Protecting your peace? I just think that I work so hard on my mental health, and I'm still working on it. And even where I'm at, I'm really working on myself. Yeah. That for someone to come in that I just met a few weeks, and they're bringing all this drama, I'm like, whoa, whoa. you got some work to do, buddy. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to step back, and if it's meant to be, it'll be meant to be. Gotta be, gotta protect yourself. I do. So, if there is there a message that you can tell a younger self and to the young generation coming up that wants to be in this social media realm, content creating, in acting, in confidence, like something that you've always wanted to tell somebody, and right now you have that platform to just like talk to them, even if it's like talking to yourself. I would say, get a journal 
or go into your notes, whatever's best for you. Because I'm not, a, I don't like to write, but I like to like type in my notes. Anytime you feel angry about a situation or a person or a problem, just write exactly how you feel because sometimes you say things that you don't mean in the moment. Believe in yourself. I would say pray. Always pray. Um, don't take no for an answer, as I've mentioned many times. And what you think matters right now won't matter in the future. So, like, it doesn't matter. It really, truly doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's a mind over matter thing. That's actual facts. That's and is this where you put your little, like, emotional music on? Low key, yeah, that would have <laughs> yes. been there. That would have, honestly. I'm like, this is so awkward. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. it never mind. You'll when see I it on TikTok. It, you'll see. You'll it's see. It's because when I when I see those emotions, I'm over here crying. I'm like, <laughs> why are you doing this to me? <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna put the video of the of Daddy one eight hundred Daddy. Yo, <laughs> you have that Daddy in you now. You're like Daddy. <laughs> I hang out with Dylan. Dylan's like not even like he doesn't he's, even care. He's ready to go eat. He's not here right now. He's, he's not here. Not, right but now. then he, you say his name. He's like, <laughs> and then like you start talking about it. He goes back down to his phone. <laughs> he likes attention. He's like, this. but <laughs> I just want to honestly, I, when this comes out, <laughs> when this comes out, yeah, I know it's gonna help out a lot of people. It's gonna make people laugh. It's gonna inspire people, and. Even even though I know we kind of did it earlier, like I do want to give you the flowers for one coming from the nine five one, right? Where's that? <laughs> Riverside motherfuckers. That's right. <laughs> coming coming from Riverside, taking the leap of faith, taking your chance in in pursuing your dream and going to Miami, now in LA, now in Hollywood, and and landing these these roles, these jobs, these like building your empire. It doesn't come easy, and not everybody can do it, but you are. So if you haven't felt proud, you should feel proud. Because Thank you. That means a lot. Like I know who we sit with. They're not, even if the numbers are 100 to 200,000 or even 1,000, we're sitting here because you have a meaning, you have a voice, and now everybody's going to hear this side of you. That maybe they haven't heard. <laughs> maybe they haven't I'm heard. I'm a little scared. <laughs> but I do want to give you those flowers. So I do want to clap it up for you real quick. You know how we do out here. Thank you. Um, shut up, shut up. Yeah, I got to close it out. Hold on. You took it, my guy. I got to close it out with the toast. A little toast to, to live. You don't have to. I'm you not get complaining. <laughs> Wait, are you trying to tell me not to drink? No, no, no. He said, yeah, that's what you really We're going to cut you off real quick. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Dylan's not going to take a shot no more because he's driving. Wow, I'm actually drinking today. And we're all going through a cleanse for the next, like, two months. No, you're not. I know I am, though. I, I really am. We'll tap in next. Yeah. When this when this drops, we're going to go. The most in. I've ever gone without drinking was, like, eight months. I could do it. But... If you haven't, make sure you subscribe, you like, you share. Geraldine, thank you so much for coming through. Finally. Thank you for having me after a year. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Quiet on set, please. <laughs> Quiet on set. Cameras up, lights up, action. Continue. <laughs> thank you again for coming. <laughs> You're for so welcome. For making this happen, you know, with the happy dads and with the water that we're about to toast with. Happy daddy. I don't even know what the if you're going through mental, If you're going through mental illness, call 1 800 Daddy. <laughs> that's, the, that's the podcast, homie. <laughs> Make sure you grab your cafecito, your waters. Barri Everybody. No cafecito. No cafecito. I don't drink coffee. Never had coffee. Nobody cares. Moving on. Pa arriba. Pa abajo. Pa abajo. Pa el centro. Y happy daddy. Pa el centro. <laughs> Seven and I am unseen. Five seven toxic. <laughs> <laughs>
Those Wait, I'll fucking talk that much. Five, five seven. You're five one. <laughs> You're five one. <laughs> and that's not a good day. Alright, so Damn. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short kings, we got this. So, <laughs> so, so the the script is you're getting ready for your wedding. Oh fuck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're ready for the wedding. You're with all your bridesmaids and everything. Without? With oh. all your bridesmaids. Oh. And you find out. He's cheated. cheated on you. With one of your bridesmaids. <laughs> with one of your bridesmaids. <laughs> and he's the bridesmaid. So this is an encounter with the bridesmaid right and now. He did me a favor. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. So this, um, this is the encounter first with the bridesmaid. Oh, we're, 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 we're being serious. We need your bridesmaids, though. Yeah, one of the bridesmaids. It's like oh, right now, so like you, they, <laughs> someone send you a picture, a you screenshot on, of your bridesmaid oh, well, and your know. future husband. Out on a date. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, it's only right. You're an actress. I am an actress. Am I being okay? So let, let's let's start. Ready? I'll be the girl. Okay. Okay. I'll be the girl. We're in probably right now, right? Oh yeah. I don't know what's going on, but we're pretending to do. Yeah, you just found out. So you just got in your. You can't, you're gonna come at me. Is this like novela Spanish or English? Como que Como me puedes engañar con esta tipa? No sabía qué estaba haciendo. Pero ¿por qué te estás riendo como un baboso? Porque no estaba pensando lo que estaba pasando. Me, ¿Estás él, hablando en serio? Él vino conmigo. No sabes lo que está pasando ahorita, que me acabas de engañar con una tipa que es mi amiga. No sé. <risa> I don't know, bro. Damn. Was that hey. good? You're hired. Whatever. That's the best part we call him baboso. That's the best part. I know. I don't know how to react to that. I'm like, I damn. I took that person away. I, like I, I know. I took. <laughs> bro, I hid behind the camera. Me gusta la mala. Me gusta la mala. So. Are we doing commercial too? I'm just kidding. No. Okay. So continue. I don't even. Unless you coming. want to do free advertising for Happy Dad. Shit. Drink okay. Happy Dad. <laughs> nah, we already did. We already did. Vale, Carito, no, Carito, no te preocupes. Llama 1-800-Happy-Dad. Oh, fuck, 